that's what a first in my life. And I'm not a young puppy, but who else found tax law interesting all of a sudden? Wow, that's a very good speaker. That was awesome. So I've got to follow him up. All right, I was asked to, to do the virtuous circle of a token-based investment fund. Okay? That uh, has gotten a lot of um, notoriety through economists. How many economists in the room? One. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you'll find this as compelling as uh, a lot of other people have. I've written several Medium articles that got me to that. One was the blockchain versus the VC, which is the 10 investment funds that we are um, implementing, gamifying venture capital and allowing one of the funds to be controlled by token holders. That led us to why and that's the virtuous circle of a token-based investment fund. You can find both of them on Medium, but I'm gonna go into detail here. Now, obviously, you know, I'm for the convergence. If you were here yesterday, we're working on the Silicon Nexus project, and we're all about video games. Now, who in the room has not read the book or seen Ready Player One? All right, so that looks like about half the room. So, so you all can know what's in my head and what's in the head of a gamer. How many in here are gamers? All right, so you all, the gamers are going to love this and everybody else should figure out why we find this so compelling. Because to this, if, you're, if it runs the video. I live here in Columbus, Ohio. In 2045, it's still ranked the fastest growing city on earth but it sure doesn't seem like it when you live in the stacks. They called our generation the missing millions. Missing not because we went anywhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere except the Oasis. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. A world where the limits of reality are your own imagination. decided it's time to do it in 2014 and like good engineers we set out and put up a, a bill of material cost on what it's going to do to do just the design build portion of it. It came to over a billion dollars and we checked and all of our bank accounts didn't have that much in it. So we decided we had to invent money. 
I don't know if you all realize this, but video games have had virtual economies and virtual currency for almost 30 years. That virtual currency and virtual economy has had real world value for almost 30 years. The only thing it was missing was the blockchain to secure it so those things can transact in the real world easily without getting ripped off. Because once you convert virtual items from a video game to real world cash, there's over 70% um, over 70% fraud problem that the blockchain gets rid of. So that was our answer. We're going to just invent this money and go forward. I ran over this yesterday. There's over 50 million people in blockchain today and about 7 billion people on the planet and over 2 billion gamers. But this is how the consumer game economy works today. It's all wrapped around a dollar bill. You have developers, publishers, equipment, manufacturers, players, and media, all that's in, in the game for themselves. If any one of them gets wealthy, it does not help the others. So it's a, you know, that pretty much creates a, hate to say it, a backstabbing economy that everybody's in it for themselves because it's all wrapped around of the dollar bill. We're marrying that to the consumer, to the out of home entertainment side, which is a little more complex, but it's still wrapped around the dollar bill. Everybody's in it for themselves. We're pushing that to a token economy. And in a token economy, magical things happen because people don't have to be out for themselves anymore. If one person makes the token go up in value, it goes up for everybody, so people are more apt to help each other. Now let me go into a lot of detail and let you see the real impact of this. Anybody remember when the Xbox came out? <laughs> it was a unique time in the consumer game console market. Microsoft had tried five times before. Sony, PlayStation, had just kicked out of the market Sega and Nintendo. They owned the market. They, they, I mean, lock, stock, and barrel, it was theirs. And Microsoft was coming out with the Xbox, and this time they decided to come with all guns blazing and gave Kevin Backus, who happens to be on my team, <laughs> pretty much, I'll just say, a briefcase full of money, of you know, dollar bills. That was the medium he used to run around, and he invested in like a thousand different content manufacturers to have content for this platform. Because video games is a hit driven business. And as Tim Chang has eloquently put it in the past, you know, in any hit driven business, content is king. Nobody can predict which content's gonna explode, but on any given platform, some content will explode. But anywhere that content is king, distribution of that content is God Almighty. So he went around and he looked for, for the killer app for the Xbox so it would break in the market. And he used the dollar bill. And he found one piece of content that just exploded. Who knows what that piece of content was? Xbox Live? No, well before Xbox Live, it was Halo. 24 million people bought the Xbox exclusively to play Halo. Right now it's over 110 million people. Okay? And that had a network effect. Everybody's familiar with the network effect. 24 million people came to the Xbox to play Halo. 10 million went over to this other game because they wanted two games to play, not just one. And 5 million over here. That's the network effect. But it's a limited network effect. Meaning all the games on the Xbox didn't get to 24 million people. Halo did. Okay? Because he used the dollar bill as medium. Had he used an Xbox token, and made everybody get the content through the same medium, the Xbox token, something magical would have happened, okay? When Halo exploded, 24 million people would have flocked to the Xbox token. How many people's in crypto today? About 50 million? So half would be on one token? It would have exploded. That token would have gone way up in value. I mean, there's 50 million people that at one point in time was responsible for, what, $800 billion in value? So if half of those went to one token, what would have happened? That would have definitely gone from like a penny to a dime, at least, right? <laughs> so I 
and all boats would rise together. So his, if he put $100,000 into 1,000 companies, he now had a million dollars into 1,000 companies. What would that do? It would have given 1,000 companies more runway. So instead of ending up with one halo out of a thousand, he might have had two or three. That would have been very impactful. But even better than this, if the slide would advance, there we go, is everybody in the ecosystem would have 10x or 100x or 1,000x because somebody found halo. And that's the virtuous circle of a token-based economy, a token-based investment fund, is the fact that one person that owns those tokens does something that increases the value, increases the value for everybody. <coughs> when was the last time that somebody 10 x the dollar bill? You have to get more dollar bills to have more value. With tokens, you don't. You have to, you can get more tokens to have more value, but if you, your token goes up in value, mm -hmm. you've doubled your, you know, how much value you have. That's infinitely more powerful. Most people don't comprehend what that truly means in an ecosystem like this. Now here, this is a typical World of Warcraft player's items in his game. Some of those could be worth thousand dollars some of them worthless or you know like maybe half a penny or something but those are non-fungible tokens and those also can go up and down in value like that and can be traded around the difference are those are kind of singular so you know i say singular they can be like one set that all of a sudden that one thing there might be a thousand of them in the game those go up in value it doesn't have the same effect but if you used right it drives people back to the token so those what that's our, uh, our non-fungible tokens on our crowdfunding page, but um, in our tokenomics, the way we designed it was 38% is designed to reward players who play in the games, and 37% um, is designed to invest, be that, you know, what Kevin Back has had to do with the Xbox, we have to do with our ecosystem. So we broke that up into 10 investment funds, that was the first article, which is the uh, blockchain versus the VC, and I gamified it. <laughs> so that'll be something for you all to look at as well. But that's um, effectively what I want, want to talk about. I'll talk about the rest of this uh, later on in the pitch competition, but this is how you all get involved. Um, and thank you for your time. Thanks.